Hey guys, Cybermage here, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to get started with doing CTFs. So I've created two different types of paths that you can take, uh, depending on your situation. One of the paths is for those people who are brand new to cybersecurity and have zero IT background, while the other path is for those people who are new to cybersecurity and have some sort of cybersecurity or, you know, pretty much any IT background. Um, so yeah. That's pretty much it. The main thing for people who are new to cybersecurity is just to get that foundational knowledge um, of IT in order to get started. Besides that, both of the paths will lead to the same end conclusion of becoming proficient or good at doing CTFs. However, um, or because both of the paths reach the same conclusion, at one point, once the first path for those people who are new to cybersecurity get the foundational knowledge, the rest of it is going to be pretty much the same for both of them. And I'll point out in the video where that is going to happen. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Another thing to note is that while you're doing this path and you're learning, the main thing to note, and I cannot emphasize this enough, is to always take notes, take good notes and continuously taking notes. That's what you're, you're gonna need to do and that's very important throughout this learning path and throughout your growth and in cybersecurity in general. So yeah, let's get started. We're gonna start with the first path, which are people who are new to cybersecurity and have zero IT background. So the platform that we're gonna use is Try Hack Me. And you're gonna go ahead and create account, click on learn, this learn over here, and then look at the learning roadmap. Uh, it gives you a huge path over here on what you need to do, but you don't need to do all of them. You just need to do the first two, these two modules, pre-security and cybersecurity 101. And if you click on cybersecurity 101, you can see that it just gives you the foundational knowledge that you need to tackle more difficult types of topics, as well as um, do more um, difficult um, certifications as well. So the command line teaches you about networking, Linux fundamentals, super important, Windows fundamentals, super important. Uh, Metasploit as well, web hacking, offensive, and as well as defensive. So it just gives you a pretty much a broad range of foundational knowledge. So when you're done this, then you have pretty much uh, finished your foundational knowledge journey, and you can now pivot to the next learning platform, which is called Hack the Box. I actually you should go back a step, uh, one step back and actually mention that Try Hack Me does cost about $14 per month. But if you're a grinder, I believe you should be able to complete pre-security and cybersecurity 101 within one to two months. That's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, once you're done this, you got to pivot to your next platform, which is called Hack the Box. Um, so at this point of stage, both of the paths are now combined and it's now for people who do have some sort of IT experience or some cybersecurity background or have graduated from cybersecurity um, the way I have. Um, and this is the path that I followed as well, pretty much. And I'll let you know my learning strategy that I had, but let's first finish the path. So you're going to go to the starting point over here on Hack the Box, and you're going to complete this first two or three tiers, the tier zero, tier one, and tier two. You're going to complete all these three tiers. And don't worry if this is quite difficult for you. Remember to um, take notes. Um, very important. They're going to cover some topics that might be confusing for you, like SQL injection, server-side template injection as well. But the whole point of this is just to give you that exposure. So make sure you're taking notes, even in the foundational path that I told you about, continuous, you know, continuously take notes. That's pretty much it. Um, take notes, and once you're done this, you're going to pivot again to the third platform, which is also by Hack the Box, which is called Hack the Box Academy. So at this point, you have some exposures to CTFs. You've done all these three tiers and you've looked at the walkthrough as much times as you needed. It really doesn't matter how much times you look. No competition at this point. At the end of the day, as long as you're learning something from the walkthrough, that's improvement and that's growth. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So don't worry about solving these without looking at the walkthroughs. Look at it as much time as you needed. This is just to gain some exposure. So you've done these three tiers and you are now on Hack the Box Academy. You're gonna go, you're gonna be presented to the dashboard section over here if my computer loads. Also gonna check out this, all right, perfect. So you're just gonna go to paths and then go to job role paths. And there's two paths that you can pick, whichever one you want, the bug bounty hunter one or the penetration tester one. 
The Bug Bounty Hunter one is more focused on web, while the Penetration Tester one is more focused on networking, and it does have a bit of web concept in there as well. Um, the reason why uh, web concept is in Penetration Tester Path um, is because web is everywhere, you know? It's even in the cloud as well. So, um, and, you know, the web is one of the most largest attack services that a company can have sometimes. So, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. You're going to pick one of these two paths. So either the Bug Bounty Hunter and the Penetration Tester one. Much of these modules overlap with each other, which is why when you're doing the, for example, the Penetration Tester pathway, the Bug Bounty Hunter completion over here will also increase at the same time. Uh, for me, what I did was I started off with the Penetration Tester one, completed about 30 to 25%, and I noticed that Bug Bounty Hunter was completed like 50%. So I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and finish Bug Bounty Hunter path and then come back to the Penetration Tester one. And that's exactly what I did. I went ahead and pivoted to the Bug Bounty Hunter one, completed that, and then went back to the Penetration Tester one. I want to note, however, um, again, once again, I'm just going to keep repeating it. Make sure you take good notes. Make sure you have a good note taking application and you're taking notes throughout this whole process. Use Obsidian, Notion, or Bookstack, whichever one you prefer. But continuously take notes. And also, while you're doing the penetration tester path or the bug bounty hunter path, you also have to do another thing at the same time, and which is complete one to three boxes per week on Hack the Box. Um, this Hack the Box uh, app over here, this app, which is a subdomain, which we can call it as labs. I think it's also called labs. Um, the starting point is free, but the machines that we're going to do now is going to cost you money. This is about $25 a month. And we're not going to do the active boxes because they might be too difficult at the start. We're going to do the retired boxes. And this is which, and this is what I did as well. I paid for the $20 a month, uh, 20 to $25 a month. And I went to the to the retired box machines and I did one to three boxes every single week um, while I was doing the penetration tester pathway. So I was learning as well as applying the knowledge and um, taking good notes of each one, the penetration tester path and as well as each of these boxes. And I'm gonna get to how to take notes for these boxes as well in a bit. But you're gonna do one to three of these boxes every single week. And you're gonna start off with the easy one and gradually increase and increase and increase. Now, when it comes to taking notes for these boxes, I was taking them on Obsidian. This is how I would take notes. So shown over here. So for example, we have the box blue over here and I created a folder called blue. We have this walkthrough file over here. This is where I will write down the things that I attempted. For example, I attempted an Nmap scan. I attempted using Fuff or directory brute forcing, Nikto, and I would also write down the commands that I have done while doing this box. And at any point, I'm probably gonna get stuck because I was new. And I also wanna point out that about 95% of the time, I did look at the walkthroughs when I was starting off. And every time I did look at the walkthroughs, I would note down, hey, do, make sure you do this. So for example, I was brute forcing a bunch of files for a web server and I, um, I didn't go through the whole word list, you know, and I would just put in my notes, hey, um, brute force whole word list. That's a note. I improved my enumeration methodology and I learned something from it and I improved as well. And sometimes maybe the exploit that you're looking for is on the fifth page of Google and nobody goes that far, right? Um, we probably go to the first, first page or the second page and that's a so maybe the exploit is on the fifth page and I just did not do that while I was doing this box. So I'd write down over here as no search five plus pages results on Google and I improved my enumeration and I learned something out of it. So that's pretty much how I would do the box. After this, I would do two other things. Number one is I would go to Ipsec's YouTube channel and Ipsec is an amazing hacker who posts uh, hack the box boxes um, and I would just watch him do it. And Every time when there's a command that interests me or his methodology or things that he's talking about, I would note it down here uh, or the walk or the path that he took or the mindset that he had. I would note it down here and I would learn from it. For example, I learned the dash O N argument, which is to um, save the output of Nmap to a file in case we ever lose the output, stuff like that, you know? Um, 
And I would note down things that I've learned from IPSEC. And the third thing that I did, which I did sometimes, sometimes I didn't, is I would go to three to five blog posts about the same machines to see what type of techniques or methodologies they followed or did. Um, and the blog that I recommend to look at is OXDF, Hack Stuff. Uh, he goes quite into depth about each of the boxes and actually explains them instead of just saying, hey, I did this, I did this. He actually explains them and which is what you want to do, right? You're trying to learn from these boxes. So you would continuously do these one to three boxes per week, make notes like this the way I did. And as you're doing them, you're also learning and applying knowledge. And once you've finished these, finished a couple of boxes, quite a lot, sometimes it takes a lot, you know, everyone's different. It took me around 70 boxes to actually become proficient and good at this. So it's a long-term game, but it's going to help you in everything. Once you're good at boxes, you're going to... Um, understand different technologies better, problem solve better, and you're going to build that pattern recognition abilities to tackle more hands-on exams, right? So um, what, at the end of the day, what you're trying to do with all these note-takings and revising your notes as well, make sure you do that every time. I did that every time I did like 10 boxes, I would revise it. Also, my routine was that I would do 30 medium boxes first, and then I would pivot to 30 me, uh, sorry 30 easy boxes first and then I would pivot to 30 medium boxes this was kind of like a steady plan that I kept for myself and then I would go back to easy and then medium and I never bothered with hard but eventually I was able to do some of the hard pretty easily um, so create a steady routine for you uh, continuously make notes review your notes um, and eventually the pattern recognition ability increases you learn how to problem solve you learn about your mistakes and you will eventually become proficient at it. That's pretty much it. At the beginning, you're going to feel like a useless uh, piece of idiot. But it's going to grow and you're going to become much more better. And you just got to keep grinding. That's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, that is it for the video. Um, I, I would also mention that for note taking, you can use Obsidian, which I use. Notion is another popular one or Bookstack. Uh, I have Bookstack over here and I'm going to make a complete different video about how to run Bookstack, download it, and uh, how to use it. But yeah, that is pretty much it. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you for the next one.